Let, let's just kind of um, refresh what we have learned so far by using VI editor. Okay. So just look at your note for now. So we learned how to invoke VI. Invoke means how to run it. Okay, by typing VI space and followed by a file name. Okay. So which in VI, uh, okay. Initially I didn't intend or didn't plan to give a lecture on VI. Actually, VI is a half day course to get fully understand the feature of VI. So what I did this morning, just gave you everybody a very quick trick. So the basic command that you have to use to do very basic editing work on the Linux, on the Linux system. So, so VI actually, when you, let, let me copy it to the VI screen, which I have right now. Uh, because this is very important. You, know, you don't know how to edit it. You, you, you cannot do anything. So, so this is the this is the where I, I left before. So this is okay. Let me try to kind of because this is very important. I I hope everyone understand where we are right now. Okay. Supposedly we should do a editing on B A S H R C instead of profile. That profile, which I made a mistake. You no, know, but that's okay. So instead of doing that, I I will try to do another one called. The, Kind of refresh everybody's memory what we learned so far. Okay, first thing you have to do just a VI. It's a Unix or Linux command for text editing purpose for the VI. Okay, you always can find VI and you can say VI dash dash help. I hope this will work. We'll give you a detailed explanation about the VI. Okay, so it's two, let me. Make the screen bigger. Okay. Say, say here, you don't understand VI, you forgot something. VI space two dash. VI, and I said dash. No, there are two one space between I and the dash. So VI space dash dash help will show you the VI help menu. Which is normally I didn't use this at all. Okay, so to invoke VI, you just say VI and space, and you know the file name. You just say type file name after VI. In this case, I just say type test.txt. Okay, now this is, since file is already there, so the VI will load the content of the file into the memory. So the first thing you know is using this is called a screen mode. This is just a read mode. You, 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 cannot do, you only can move your cursor around or move it up or downward, but you really cannot do editing. So before you can do editing, the first thing you have to do is what? You want to do editing. What do you have to do? I, I, I'm using VI. I load the file into the memory, which I show on the screen. So I'm trying to do something. I try to type in something. So what do you have to do? Someone can tell me what? What? You have to do something. Well, I want to insert file, something. I want to add file to the text. Exactly, either I, lowercase i, or lowercase o. So the lowercase i will insert the text right at the, your mouse or cursor position. Lowercase o will, will insert one after. Okay, so, so that's good. Let's say, let's say o. Okay, now you can type it, type it, type it, type it, right? Okay, so this is called the insert mode. Did you see the insert on your left hand, left hand side corner? Called insert. So once you finish typing, what do you have to do? I'm done. Escape key, exactly. So you are close insert mode, and back to back to your original read mode only. Okay. So I like to save. Okay. You can go back to command line mode. The way to command line mode is you press the shift 
on your, on the screen, on your keyboard, shift and the semicolon. So you see there's a two dot on your lower left corner of the screen. This is called the command line mode. Okay, so in the command line mode, there are a couple of ways you can do. A couple of things you can do. Number one, I want to read a text in a file. So what do you say to do? I know I'm going to load a text in a file. R, followed by the file name. Okay, you say, right now we say, we use the R1, T, followed by T1, you say, one of the file. Okay, I can say RT1. So that will bring the file name, uh, will read the file, the file, and then do everything into the memory. Okay, so so the first thing you know, at the command command line mode, you are allowed to use and tap R for read additional file. Again, this got to be text file. Or you can say W for what? For write. Okay, a lot of people get confused about save. S is not really set. It's, 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 it's a stream. It's a stream command to replace. Let's say I want to replace the paste. I say, oh, this is wrong. It's got to be in lower case. Okay, what I'm supposed to do. There, there are a couple of ways to do that. Um, look, I'm going to teach you how to use a VR editor. Um, the easy way to do is go back to your command line. I don't want to confuse you. We stay one at a time only. Okay, you go back to this. I'm going to replace it. Right now, it's uppercase paste. I want to change it to lowercase. Okay? So, what I had to do, I had to go back to the command line mode by typing shift semicolon, right? We take this command line and I type S. S not for save, S for stream. Stream. So, I'm going to substitute this stream or character, P A T H, separated by slash, but lowercase. So this case means I'm going to replace uppercase paste by lowercase paste. And then I just say enter. That will change it to lowercase. So S doesn't mean save. S means it's a string command to replace characters. Okay, so it, it's a bit confusing. Okay, so you know one more thing. S is to replace string. Okay. Now I want to, you know, you know, write. This is to actually write is the is the way to save file. Okay, so I want to quit. Okay, we start saving. Now you have to say Q. And the examination. Now we we'll quit, and just say don't say anything. Okay, you say use the X for exit. Now X will save. And then quit. Okay, so it depends on your, your need. Okay, so this is basically what we learned this morning. And I think those keyword comments should be good enough to do a very simple text editing. Okay, any, any question? Okay, so let's go back to what we left before break for lunch. Uh, Make sure you have this file, this line, this line, in your dot b a s s r c file by checking that you use a VR editor. No, not this one. Sorry. Uh, where's my? Here we are. Okay. Uh, this is I have to add this line to my p a paste to my file. The paste equal to
Okay, so look at your dot p dot b a s s r c file, and look at the end of the file. Make sure this line is included. Okay. So everybody has this line in your dot b a s s r c file. No, not yet. No. Okay, I'm going to save. I'm going to write this one as one T one. Okay, oh, I have to overwrite. Okay, so I will walk everybody's desktop. Make sure this this line is very important for future use, and make sure that this line is included in the dot B A S S R C. Okay, the, the T1, which I call T1. Okay. First okay, are we okay here? Okay. Okay, so it's good. Now, sometimes the first time is difficult. Otherwise, the second is should be okay. No, so so we so we are okay now. So we're going to move to the next slide. Okay, I okay. Okay. So we update dot B S S R C we like to 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 let it run in, in, in the in the system. So source is a, another unit command. It's to tell computer to run something, to run your, one of your programs. So in this case, we would like to make the pass, the one that we have called the pass, become effective. Otherwise, just setting in your file, do not say. So we had to update the dot BASSRC to make it happen. So the, what you would do, just say that type source space dot BASSRC. And out of that, you say echo. Okay, so so I'm doing right from here, right? So I just say source dot b a s h r c to run dot b a s s r c. Okay. Uh, There was a typo in my file, so it's, it's fixed. So when you say source, it should do nothing happen. Did anybody arrive here? Okay. So I like to make sure that the path is already you know, there. So let's say the next thing you have to do is just echo. Because I like to see the path is, is become effective. Echo P A T H path. So everybody should have this 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 line. So this indicate because there's a key location for ocean data view. You see that the ODV MP? That's the that's the way to find ODV. Okay. 
So we learned so far how to use a VI editor to do a very simple you know, one night editing. Even we take the almost whole morning to, to learn this, but this is a very important. So we should know how to do the editing. Okay. So any question for me so far? Okay, now I have to change the, my strategy a little bit. Karate already mentioned that all the course material is on FTP, on, uh, 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 ILD web page, including the answer to the hands-on exercise. Originally, I wanted to give you a hard time for you to type a lot. Not really a lot, but some kind of typing. And uh, it seems like it may not be a best approach because time is very variable for everybody here. So instead of learning or refresh your memory how to do you we are editor, I will try to eliminate, not try to completely eliminate, but will limit the time for typing. So so I will add if everybody do some exercise for typing and uh, give you maybe 10 or 5 minutes for typing, and I will ask you to stop, okay? And I will ask you to copy from the answer directory. Now, look like you are already typed, but you know, you try, it's good enough. It doesn't have to be fully you know, familiar with the, the VI editor. So from now on, I work more like a, a kind of a presentation, okay? But, you no. Know, don't 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 smile. No, you still uh, require to do some exercise. Okay, very simple. I will try to do a simple exercise as much as possible, instead of telling you to do a very typing intensive intensive typing. Okay, so so from now on, I I will just tell you, give you a very simple, okay, very very quick overview about additional learning command which is useful. Okay, we know the LS. List the file. So you see the dollar sign here. This is the system prompt, as you see on your screen. This is mean the, the, the server is waiting for you to tell him to do something you would like him to do. So for example, LS is just a Linux command called the listing file. So you can LS, it will tell you uh, what files enter that directory. CD is another one called changing your default directory to another directory called CD, you know, for example, CD, VAR, TMP, whatever, okay. PWD is not useful, again, because sometimes, you know, you're working in the one terminal too long and you forgot where you are. So you can say PWD stands for present working directory, PWD, see, I told you, the creator of Linux guy are really you know, lazy. They don't want, don't want you to type a really long word. Instead of typing present working directory, you just say PWD. Okay. But you have to memorize what the PWD stands for. Okay. It's good to bear, right? It's up to you say. Okay. Another one called change mode, C H M O D. What does that really mean? C H, what does that really mean? You don't know. So C H stands for change. And this is very consistent through the learning system. CH no, most likely means change. So change, CHMOD means change a modified permission of one directory. Okay. This morning, I asked someone to download, to copy file from GTAPP directory, which is one of the user, unique user. I separate from your, your, your username. I didn't change the file permission, so nobody can read that one. Also, I changed. So everybody will be able to copy the G training directory. Remember that? It's early, early this today. When I ask you to copy CP, stand for copy, dash R from GTPP, and nobody say, we cannot find this one. No, because I didn't change the permission. So I only allow GTPP to, to see that directory. So once I say change CH mod, it means change permission. So everybody can open, open up, everybody can see it. Okay, we know, we know the VI, the VI is, 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 is an editor. Okay, now the next one would be CP, copy. 
see, this guy even easier, you know, lazier, we want to say. Instead of saying C-O-P-Y, just say C-P, copy. Okay, now you will see MV. What does MV mean? Move. Okay, cut from four to two. You don't, you don't, you don't want to say MOV, just say MV. Move. Move has different meaning. The first one will be said, we're removing one file from one location to another. Okay. If the file name is the same, they are not just moving. They are not just move from one place to another. They also copy, move and the copy will replace. So MV, there are the two meaning behind. Either move file or replace. Okay, if files already exist. Okay, another one. RM should remove. Okay, it should remove files. Okay, MKDR. Okay, it's a Mac directory. Create a new working folder. Oh, double gate. This is a very important command. Even command allow you to get means you know get right. You know, what double stands for? Okay, anyone can make a guess. W. The most I, I will say W stands means the most creative, the most valuable tool in the world right now, so far. Everybody, almost everybody cannot live without W. W, he means WWW, World Wide Web, the internet. So W indicate web. Okay, so that's, you can see, W get means, what does that mean? It's, that's what I said, a non-interactive network can download it. Using double get to download the file over the internet or over the web with double get. And this is the comment I'm going to teach you later or today, hopefully. And there's only one comment. You can download the HTTP, you know, entire complete data set back to 1997 up to last month. Just one single comment, which I will not recommend you do right now. Otherwise, you will blow up my, my server. But that's the way to down when you return to institution. You know, you, you can try it right now. Okay. Another one called a tar. You, you know tar, right? You know, you know sometimes it's underground is very sticky and then you tar, which means tar. So what's that mean? Tar, as I say in the in on the, on my slide, go store and extract file from a disk archive. So that means you put everything into one central location. And then you tar together, it kind of compress, put together, they are called tar. Okay, so that's a called tar. And so you can put together, when you store together in one single location, you should be able to get what you want. That's called a tar. Okay. And zip is to uncompress. Zip, you know, zip we put everything together. So and zip is to just do the opposite way. So called unzip. Okay. So here we go. For the double gate. So I'm only to right now. I'm only to emphasize how to use double gate to get data from the internet or from double or for HTTP or FTP. So uh, let, let us stop here right now. Let's copy it to your command line, your your screen. Okay, copy it to your screen. Just say just just tap double gate, double G E T, and see what happens. Okay, so so they will tell you that's a command line called double gate, but this is double gate missing URL. It look like you need a URL after double gate. So the only thing to do, you can say, okay, I don't understand how to use a double gate, so I'm, I need help. So as you say, double gate space double dash and help. Okay, everybody do that right now. Okay, just tap double get space to to dash 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 help. Okay, so this gave you a very lengthy explanation how to use double get. Okay. Are we on the same page now? Okay, good. So far, 
far so good. So you you have difficulty using any kind of command, you can use in the browser, either Firefox or whatever the browser you, you, you can use, and search for WGET. So there are a lot of information on the web. You know, but they, even they give you a very simple example how to use a double gate. Okay, so so we know our double gate is available here. Now let's go back to return to my slide. Okay, so and we will tell you, I will tell you later on how to get GTPP data over the internet using double gate. Okay, so okay, this is uh, here we are. Uh, Right now, let's change to your working directory by typing cd space gtraining. Okay, this is your home directory, your very top level. Okay, so you say pwd, everybody type pwd, present working directory. So you will see something very similar to mine, called home, EVSR, you will use an user ID. Okay, so it should be there, right? Okay, so CD will take you to your home directory and type in PWD will show your present working directory. Now, it should be your home directory. This is called your home directory or home folder. Okay, but we have Working directory for this class called G training. Okay, right now typing LS, this thing, what you have in your home directory. Okay, just say LS. And I anticipate you should get the G training, but no, I didn't type here, but I will download. I'm going to copy the one which I asked you to do earlier today called copy space dash r from gtapp user directory called gtraining to my home directory. Okay, so I should be able to see another directory called gtraining. This may not, may be too small for you to see, but this is here, this is called gtraining. Okay, gtraining. So, so right now, you should have a structure really similar to mine, what I show on the screen. You will say something example dot text top, and followed by, then after that will be G training, and, and that's kind of another uh, three will be all working uh, file this morning. So CD, what I mean? What CD mean? Anyone can tell me? Yes, so i like you to change from your home directory, which will be USR something, right? To your working directory. When I say working, that's mean that's exercise should be stay there. And okay, so right now I I'm asking you to use C D, which stands for change directory to G training. Okay? So right now I'm in G training. Okay, you can double check. But right now it's already telling you where, where you are, called G-Training. Okay. So look at what inside G-Training. Okay, did you see this one? Should be, should be, the, should be the same. There's a lot of R, something R, which is the R script, the, the script that we're going to use in the, in the code, uh, hopefully either tomorrow or, the, or on Wednesday. And you will see there's a two library. The first one called the per p e r l l i b l uppercase. That's the library you're going to use in the, during the course. And the second one called the r lowercase r l case l l i library. Okay, so those are the library I I, I wrote for this course. Okay, so this is you you see you should see uh there's a you know, real uh, R script code and also per script. Okay, so so th this is what we have so far. Okay, so everyone should see this directory, right? 
So, okay, that's good. Let's continue on the exercise, hands-on exercise. So, you are in your G training directory. That's number one. Right? You change your working directory to the directory called G training. Number two, step two, I want you to create a directory. Name it as data. Okay. So did you probably forgot what I tell you earlier, how to create the directory. Okay, something we call, I call make, right? Make a directory or make something. So you can make a case, say, got to be coming from MKE. So instead of doing that, I say MK. Okay, I say directory, right? So pick up the first three letters. So what's that? Come out with five letters. Try MKDIR space directory name data. Okay. No, you don't. You don't. You don't need double quote. Just say make directory. Right. Say make. Look up the MK directory. The first three letters DIR. So you say MKDIR space no no double quote in in the data. Okay, so you should, now after you do that, just say LS, make sure data directory is there. Okay. So this one doesn't have data directory. This one, so I'm going to say, I'm going to create a directory called MK, make directory DIR, and so data. So are we okay so far? So if you lost your screen, how can you get back? <laughs> Go back. Then the screen is disappeared. <laughs> what? You, you, you was? Yeah, the, the, it's working still. Right? Yeah. We, we have a few people has difficulty to use X-Mean. For, for, for communication, and uh, I, I don't understand why. Some people is okay, some is problem. Some are even during the middle, they just, they just lost screen, so they disappear, nothing. So, so it may be because, I don't, know, I don't know the reason. So I like to change some strategy. Instead of using putty, no, instead of using actually mean, we're going to use putty, P-U-T-T-Y, if -T -T people lost their connection to the server, okay. But now I'm going to show showing you how to use the party. Uh, party, I cannot show party here because party is for PC only. It's not for for, for Macintosh. Um, I should ask them to lower their voice <laughs> because I try to compete with the, the voice coming from this door. Look like a, I, I just <laughs> okay. Uh, let me walk around. So. Who, who lost their connection to the server? So, so, so we have some connection to the server, right? either party or, or admin. Right? Let, let me walk around and see, make sure we are still connected. So you are still okay, right? Okay. Okay. So, okay. Now, the, the difference between between party and the X means, okay. You you are using party. It might have difficulty to see the graphic which which are wrong it, okay? Because but the graphic will display on last server and and. Uh, so that's the only difference, but 
but I, I will try to get away with that. And I try to work with IT people to fix the problem we have right now. Okay, but right now we are any kind of terminal should be okay because we are trying to learn how to use the double gate to download GTPB data, which which is regular terminal should be okay. Okay, so I let you create a data directory called the data, right? So anybody should say MK DR, which means create make directory, MK DR space data, right? Okay, now change to data directory. It should be empty. And I said, okay, now this is the really challenging one. I like to have a feeling how double gate work. Okay, so by seeing, by testing, you have to tap. Begin, okay. Oh. You have to type, okay, I, I can highlight here, but I have to go back to the editing mode. Okay. You have to type double gate. After you type gate, you just say this word. Okay, so I'm showing you how to do it. You say double gate, and I can cut and paste from here to save my typing. Save typing. Okay, I can use this one, copy, and then I said, paste here, okay. We don't want to download the whole directory, right, for now. We only need to download this smaller file. It's, then this is really big. For the best copy of GTPP data in the, in the Indian Ocean for uh, 2014 May. And Bob will tell you the GDPP tomorrow, but right now we are only exercise how to get the data. Okay, so so what you have to do? Okay, you just say uh, double get. This may be too too small for you to view. Okay. Yeah, I, I will I will enlarge the screen. Let me see. Try to. Can, can you can you read this? Double, you should say double get me. How do I do it? Because I have I have, I no, I have a PowerPoint here. Yeah, yeah, but there's no No, because this is a new thing. This is a command line only. You don't need. You just enter the command and learn the command to use a double get. Right? Double get is a command. It's a program. Okay. You send double gate to retrieve GTPP data over the internet. But very nice. So you were then, how do you paste it? How do I paste? Because I have I have a PowerPoint here. I just I just I just copy from different screen, which is PowerPoint, which is this one. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. I I I, I highlight. Okay. Paula was asking me how I cut and paste, right? Yeah. Yeah, you use Control V because it doesn't work. Control V? No. You you cannot cut it. You cannot cut and cut and paste. Oh, you okay? This is a, one reason maybe we had to switch to the Macintosh. <laughs> because the Macintosh is, is, is based on the same kernel of the Linux. So, so I will be able to, to copy and pass onto different windows, but not on the PC environment. So, okay. So, so right now, if you are using PC, you have to type the, the, whole, the whole sentence. Okay. Let, let, let me close this. Window. 
teachers. So, so right now, if you have your comment line, it's just a double get. And if you have to tap this. Oh, no, I don't want to do the outcome. You have to tap the whole page. No, gee, I don't like it. Sorry. Okay, you have to tap start from FTP semicolon slash slash FTP dot NODC dot Nova dot go and so forth, all the way up to best underscore NC best. Okay, out of NC slash you have to enter GTSPP four. Okay, I make this screen bigger so you can see that. No, did not work that way. Okay, so after best underscore nc slash, you have to type the, the, the tar file, which is, is in the table, is a tar and compress right here. Okay, to download the GTAPP NetCDL version number four from for Indian Ocean in 2014 in May. So, so this is the whole sentence. It will be GTSPP4 for India Ocean in year 2014, May, and this is a table. It's a, it's a tar and a compressed. Okay. And once I hit, it will start downloading. Okay, and let, let me give it a try. See. Yeah, okay. So you see, you see it's downloading right now. On my on my on my server. It takes a while because I try to find a smaller one, but I, I, this is the smallest one of the small file that you can download. Okay, let me walk one by one. Okay, so this is one way to download GTP data, not the only way. Okay, this is just kind of, you can set up a routine job to download this on a regular basis. GTP make a base copy file on a monthly basis. So, so by the end of the, end of the training course, you should be able to create a, a procedure to automatically download the data in the area of your interest. Say Pacific Ocean or Indian Ocean and so forth. So, so I will teach you later on. So, so right now I, I, I think everybody should be able to download GTP data by using double gate, right? Yeah. Okay, so that's good. Okay, let's move on. Uh, so this is the end of exercise two, two, three. Okay, and the, the to encompass, you have to use in tar. Okay, honestly, I don't want to use entire right now because that will take too much space. But you don't know tar, what do you have to do? You want to learn tar by yourself. You want to understand what tar can do for you. Make a guess. I don't know tar, I don't know what to do with tar. What, what do you what mean? So you have to do is tar. But very simple. Think about just help. Ta help. They give you a listed option. What you can do with ta. Okay. Ta is put everything together into one single place called a ta. You know, everything together ta. Okay. So so you say ta. Um, right now we have one file. Someone has GTAPP4 underscore PA, which stands for Pacific Ocean. Okay, and uh, originally I want everybody to download Pacific Ocean because it's a bigger file. But later on I figured out this might be too much, so I changed it to IN. 
on my PowerPoint, which I didn't upload to the uh, IOD web page. Okay, so that's okay. So right now, either you have the GTAPP4 underscore PA stands for Pacific Ocean, or GTAPP4 underscore IN for Indian Ocean. But all uh, come from what, 2014 and then May, which is last, last month. This kind of file will create on a base, on a weekly basis, and on a, on a monthly basis. And uh, hopefully by the seventh of each month, we will file, new file generate. The entire FTV site will refresh on a monthly basis before the seventh of each month. Okay, so you will see that's our tar, and we will I will tell you tomorrow the file structure for this. Okay, so you want to enter this one. Okay, I don't want everybody to enter because that will take too much space. I'm going to demonstrate you. You can take a note. So this is a spatial format. You if you want to uncompress or so enter, you can say tar. Okay, dash um, C for create. Okay, but we are not going to create it anyway. But this is a C to put everything together. Instead of saying C, that's the extra. extra. So what's that? Either E or X. Extra. extra. So either E or X. And what is not E? It's X. <laughs> okay. It's an extra something. It's the cut from tar file. Okay. This is a two step into one. The file I generated, T, G, G, is two step into one. So, so it's a spatial. So you can look into the menu, but I will tell you directly called G, because this is a spatial option, you know, to 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 extract and, and compress or only at one command called G command. And F is the file name. The table I like to extract. Okay, so it got to be G T S P P uh, four days. I N and the twenty fourteen O five dot T G G. Okay. Sometimes we don't want to extract. I like to look, take a look, take a quick look. What's in the content? I don't want a garbage. Right? So I like to understand what's in the tar file. So instead of extract, instead of X, I, I put what I said T. T is it gave you a quick look on the table. So, so right now, I'd, I'd like to take a quick look. What's actually filed included in this table or table? So this gave you a listing or structure in the table. So it looks like a structure will be something begin with Indian, followed by the, the, the number of the year, the year number, and then followed by it, each individual GTAPP in a file. Okay, so, so you know that, right? T, dash T is kind of listing of the content of the table. C will create a new one, which you forget it. Okay, we are not talking about C right now. We are talking about the extract or look, take a quick look on the content of the table. So to take a quick look on the content of the table, what you have to do? You just say ta space dash t okay and and uh, in, in this particular case you have, you have to use a g and f okay i'm going to extract now the actual file okay before i do that i'd like to show you before i do that under the data directory Right now, we only have one file called gtapp4 underscore in. Some, some people have a PA, but that's okay. So I only have one file called gtapp4 in 2014.05.tgg. I want to uncompress. Okay, and, and only me. Okay, uh, please. So to, to, to uncompress, I will do T is it to take a quick look. I'm going to use an X option. Okay, so it's so, so, so done. Okay. So it's in the ocean. Uh, okay. So this is the this is a top level for the table. So I can I can keep going, keep going down to the detailed uh, subdirectory called G 
uh, changes to Indian, I-N-D-I-A-N. Okay, and it keep changing. Okay, and it's GD to 2014 and, and 05. Okay, and you will see a lot of individual file name. So the file structure will begin with data and, and the, below that will be Indian Ocean or Pacific. And 2004, because the data sorted by basin, then by year, then by month. So this is the structure for the data. It will be Indian Ocean or Pacific or Atlantic. And the below that will be year and, and followed by months. And there will be all the files observed or collected during the uh, May of 2014 will be in that directory. So, so I, I, we can count how many files. WC is a word count. It's a unit count, make a word count. So how many, uh, in, before do that, I would say, you know, it's this thing, right? This thing, this C1, will be this thing single one file, one line only. Okay, you see that before I, if I didn't say dash C1, it will multiple column on the same line. So it is it's not easy to count how many lines or how many files. So in order to count how many lines or how many files in that directory, you have to use this ls dash c1. This will display one one file at one on line only. Okay, and then you can you, you can see. So that's the difference. Okay, so this is one one line per per file. So I can count how many files I have for uh, India Ocean in 2014 May. Okay, I'm counting. I'm I'm listing. And I use another language command called a pipe. Okay, this will be output to another processor. Okay, it will be this thing, this one to another unit command called a WC count, wall count. So by doing this, it will tell me I have this much, five thousand two hundred twenty-one files in that directory. So that's me during uh, uh, two thousand May two thousand fourteen. We have. 5,221 observation in the Indian Ocean. Okay. Uh, let's get them a try to, to tell what you have right now. Okay, do you know how to do that? Okay, let me bring my comment back. So, enter your data directory. You should, you should, you should see the one file which you have download by NLDG website. So to enter, okay. So let me repeat: to enter or uncompress, you have to type T A R space dash X or extract and F and G, a special option for T G G file, and uh, followed by F. Send for file, and it, the and it will be your file name, either gtspp, either pa, gtpp4, underscore pa, pa or in, most likely it will be pa, and the 2014, 05, and .tgg, okay. Okay, did everybody type this one? Okay. It T A R is too small. T A R tar space and this option. So you, you, you will tell what based on what kind of what, what's the format of your table or tar file. Okay. So it will be tar space dash x extract and the G is a special option for T G G file. And followed by the F. Okay, let me walk over. Okay, we do cut it too. Which one? Okay, I got a pipe. Okay, pipe me there. It will two, two process. From left, you take the output from the left as input to the right, to the pipe. Okay, so so what I did in earlier, uh, I, I cd to the directory which contain the uh, data. 2014 and, and all five. Okay, and I do this thing, you know, it's 
which gave me a multi-column output. Which there's not, not where I want. I want a single one line per file. So I, you know, to do that, I have to erase dash C uppercase and one. Be only one one line per per file. Okay. So this is a, I I cannot count right now, right? Because it's too quick. So instead of doing counting, there's another language command called the WC, word count. Okay. So I'm I am output the first command called this one, and called a pipe. They are kind of vertical line on your keyboard. Okay, I show you where it is. Okay, so we know there are, there were five thousand two hundred twenty one stations in the Indian Ocean for the. Year two thousand fourteen and the May two thousand fourteen and May. Is anyone can tell me how many stations we have in the Pacific Ocean? Someone should be able to tell me that. How many observations we have? Not not you. You are using you are using PA? You should be able to tell me. Is that correct? Is that from you have you got? I'm asking the someone should be able to tell me how many observations we have for the Pacific Ocean in year, in May 2014. And the C says it's roughly 8,000 something, right? Is that the same number you have? You know how to do that? <laughs> how many stations? How many stations we have Measurement, how many stations? That'd be one, one measurement, one station. Do you say 8,000? Mine is 5,221 for Indian Ocean. 72,000. Okay. No. So, so what's, what you got? Uh oh. <laughs> okay. No, the reason is that because for India, because it's much smaller, it's, it's, it's easier to extract. It's just, it's just for demo only. So, so later on, you know, you will using one of GTPP two, for example, called the WGI, uh, GWI, GTSPP web interface, which is available online. You should be able to use that tool to create an area of your interest. Look like Malaysia. You may want to look in for northern India, or you don't care about Atlantic Ocean. So, so if, for example, you might want to look into, into Atlantic Ocean. Say, what's the observation? No, up to early, up to from uh, June first, up to yesterday, in 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 the uh, northern Atlantic Ocean, or in the in the area near the Spain, for example. So this is one of the task that I like you to do. I give a presentation on the uh, Thursday morning. Just pick a small area or near near your your country. Okay, but not too small, because GTAPP data is is in most likely in in the open ocean. You may have a few stations near the coastline, but the chances are very small. So I would like you to retrieve an area that close to your country, okay, by using GWI, which stands for GTAPP with interface. Okay, and I will tell you uh, how to manipulate that kind of data file. Okay, so that's the purpose. I don't want you to do to study the whole global ocean. That 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 not make sense. I like you to focus on an ocean close to your country. Okay, and then we will see how what we have right now. Okay. And and I'm particularly interested in the coast of the Peru because as I talked to people from Peru, there was a lot El Nino happening this year, still ongoing. So so if someone can create a map, that would be great. You know, monthly map, see. And it looks good for your forecasting, see. You can tell people ahead of time. And normally, you will be able to tell people up to three months ahead of time. You know, see, this is a new coming. And last year, in the US East Coast, we got a lot of snow. It's more than normal condition. It's almost double or triple snowfall uh, last year. So this is because the El Nino occurred just right off the Peru coast. Okay. So. 
I think I have good enough for me right now. I, I need, yeah, I, I'm going to say that. <laughs> It'll be good for everybody. So, so let's just take a relax, take a 30 minute break, and be back uh, by you know, the 3.30, okay? And I'm still around answer any question, okay? So, so let's take a break, okay, for now, and then back by 3.30. Thank you. <laughs>